The complex numbers 0, U, and V, they form the vertices of an equilateral triangle in the Argan diagram. Come on, the question even says diagram in it. So I'm going to draw an Argan diagram and I'm going to try and put an equilateral triangle on there. So um, for reasons of simplicity, I'm just going to draw more or less. Oh, why isn't my straight line happening? Uh, I'm just going to draw more or less the uh, first quadrant here because I don't need more quadrants to really illustrate what I'm trying to get at. So I know that the uh, three vertices of this equilateral triangle aren't all in random positions. One of them is at the origin. So I'm going to place that zero there. And U and V are somewhat arbitrary um, in that U you know, and V, there are no particular qualities applied to them independently of each other. So I'm just going to put U kind of like anywhere. Let's put uh, this U here. And now once I know where U is, um, I know where V has to be as well. Um, I can kind of cheat a little bit. Um, this is not something you can necessarily do um, unless you've got a protractor nearby. But um, I'm putting that about there. I'm going to make that a bit bigger. Um, you can see what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get the radius here in order to get uh, my equilateral triangle thing happening. So let me just put that a little uh, less obvious there. Okay, fantastic. And now what I want to do is being that the origin is uh, one of my uh, vertices and therefore I've got this kind of length here from zero to u, zero to v has to be the same distance. And so that's why I've put them on the, I'm going to put v on the circumference of this circle. And the question is just, well, where will v go um, so that, like where on the circumference can I sit so that I'm going to get um, not only zero to v being the same distance, but u to v being the same distance. And I'm just eyeballing this. This is only for the, you know, my own um, uh, help to get a, a useful diagram there. I reckon that's kind of okay. I hope that you're satisfied with that. Um, look at that. I reckon that oh, it's pretty equilateral. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. So there is my diagram. Let's get rid of the rest of this. I don't need it. Um, loop. There we go. Ta-da. So now I've got my zero, my u and my v and I'm now going to try and use this diagram to help me to show this result. Uh, y is u squared plus v squared equal to uv. Now, in order to do this, you can immediately see that I have to make a choice uh, about what form of complex number I'm going to use to, to carry out this operation, right? And this is one of the questions I posed to you, like which form of complex number did you choose? Now, can I just ask you, oh, you know what, would have been clever if I did this in the, um, in the poll that I, you know, hastily put together now, but before, but can you post in the chat for me, um, which form of complex number, and I'm going to be specific here, um, you'll see why in a second, which form of complex number did you use first? If you changed your mind, that is totally okay. But I want to know what was your instinct? Where did you go first? Uh, and then I'm going to ask you, um, see if we have any thoughts on, on why. Um, so uh, why is in the reason, not why is in the coordinate. So I, I've got Emmanuel jumping in with an early uh, on rectangular form and it looks like Verena agrees. Uh, I've got exponential mod. It looks like we've got all three. Okay, I still want to see a few more. Okay, e rectangular again from Sazma. Um, Zhao went to exponential. Uh, who else have we got? A few people haven't written anything yet. What other forms did you go to? Again, I'm, I'm wondering which one you went to first, which was your instinct. Um, anyone else? Okay, mod arg for Jiayu, thank you. I'll wait for a couple more. I'm interested because we've got, we're like everywhere at the moment. Um, it looks to me, again, I should have done this as a poll and it would have counted for me, but we've got quite a few who've gone to exponential form, which interests me because um, at least in the first instance, I also went to exponential form and I'm about to show you why. Um, but you'll also see why it's partly a trick question. So sorry, but not sorry. Okay, let me, let me see what I mean. Remember I mentioned to you right from the outset that U and V are, are somewhat random, right? They can be anywhere, even though I've drawn them here in the first quadrant. They don't have to be, right? So I need to define U in, in some random terms. I don't even know how far it is from the origin because... Um, it's an equilateral triangle, but I don't know how big the equilateral triangle is. So I'm going to go with, uh, oopsie daisy, I'm going to go with exponential form, so r e to the i theta. Um, and the reason for that is because when I think about the particular shape that I'm interested in, right, this is an equilateral triangle. Once I know where u is, v is no longer random. Like you remember when I started to draw this line here and then I was like, oh, where am I going to position it? The position of v depends on the position of u. And I was talking about it in terms of distance, like the word equilateral literally means equal like length of the sides. So I've got this kind of um, operation happening, right? Um, and so that tells me, for example, that this V is not just um, some random, you know, some other like 
um, different R, different theta, that kind of thing, I actually know it's going to say, share the same modulus as U. So I can say, if I'm still in exponential form, that this is R E to the I something else. I mean, clearly there's a different argument happening here. Um, and you can see maybe where my reasoning is going to go here, right? If I've got R E to the I theta, um, where is theta in this diagram? And the answer is it's measured from the positive real axis anti-clockwise up towards um, this point, right? So therefore, uh, oops, it is uh, I'm going to put this theta in here. You see that? Now, because this is an equilateral triangle, I know that this angle, um, or rather all the angles in the triangle, are going to also be equal. Um, and so because the angles sum of a triangle is pi, therefore you're getting pi on 3 everywhere, right? So if I say, uh, what's the best way to do this? I'll just put the pi on 3 here. If I say this is pi on 3, then you can infer what the angle for v is going to be equal to, or what the argument is, right? Because it is this theta plus this pi on three, right? So I'm gonna put that in here, I reckon I can just nestle that in. That's theta plus pi on three, and that's, that's the argument that I'm after, right? So therefore I'm gonna pop that up here, theta plus pi on three. Now I posed that question to you before about like why would you choose one complex, uh, one form of a complex number over another and I hope you can see why I leaned into exponential. Um, I knew I was going to have to do some reasoning around angles and that's just easier to do in exponential or in trigonometric in polar mod arg form. Um, I went to exponential mainly because I was lazier. It seems to have most of the same information, right? Uh, modulus and argument. Um, so I can just write it in a more succinct form but you'll see I don't completely escape trigonometric form, at least in this first method of the proof that I'm going to show you, okay? All right, so I've got my setup, right? And I wonder if this was consistent to you, if your diagram looks very similar. I'm now ready, I know enough to try and prove this result that um, I, I'm, I'm going at here, right? U squared plus V squared equals UV. I can just go ahead, given the way I've defined U and the way I've defined V, I can just compute what U squared plus V squared is and what UV is, and then hopefully, if I've done this right, they will be the same, okay? So um, I can do either of them in any order, U squared plus V squared or UV, but be, given that um, the complex, sorry, the exponential form of a complex number is best set up for multiplication, right? Um, rectangular form, it's much easier to add things together, but exponential form, it's easier to multiply, so I'm going to start with that. So here comes my proof, right? Um, the right hand side, the right hand side is equal to UV. So let's go ahead and evaluate that based on the way that I've defined U and V. Uh, I'm just going to get R E to the I theta and I'm multiplying that by R E to the I theta plus pi on 3. Okay, now once I've written that, there's really not too much to do to get this to some base level, like most simplify that you can get it. Um, you can see I've got my arguments coming, sorry, my moduli coming together first, so I multiply those. And then just by index laws, you can see I'm just gonna have to add those, those powers, those indices together. So I get um, e to the i, which is, that's the common factor. And then what am I gonna get in the brackets? What arguments are gonna add together? Well, you got theta plus theta, so I just get two theta. And then you've got that pi on three hanging out the end there. And as mentioned, uh, I'm kind of done at this point, right? Like, there's no obvious way that I can simplify this further. So I'm gonna call that a day on the right-hand side. And now I'm gonna turn my attention to the left-hand side, okay? Now here we're now considering u squared plus v squared. So it's a little more effort, but I'm still gonna be able to do it. Um, I'm gonna take u and v independently and square them, right? So it looks to me like, I mean, here's, here's u right here. When you square it, what happens? Well, the modulus gets squared, so you get r squared. And when you square the uh, exponential part of it, that's just doubling the angle, right? We've seen this before. So I'm just gonna get i to theta up here in the index. Ta-da, there's u squared. So then I'm gonna go to uh, v squared, which is what has the same modulus, so you get your r squared there. Uh, and then just be careful here, when you go e to the i what, again, the entire angle gets doubled. So that includes the theta part of it, but it also includes the pi on three part of it. So that's gonna become two pi on three, like so. 
All right, now you can see why I started with the right-hand side first and now doing the left-hand side. Left-hand side, a bit of a mess. Um, this, this thing here, I'm gonna have to do some sort of pulling apart in order to try and get it to something like this. But hopefully you can see it's already promising, right? For instance, um, you can see right here, this two theta that I got in my original um, right-hand side, it's appeared here and here. So it's like, oh, that's promising. Um, and also the same deal with this, uh, what color am I gonna choose? With this R squared, right? You're like, oh, that's really good. You can see I'm headed in the right direction. Um, things are going to look good for me, right? So I'm gonna say equals what I'm gonna do on the next line. Um, this is one of those places where the kind of simplifying that you do, it depends on where you're headed to, right? There's so many different ways to simplify something. So what I notice is that what I have is this one term up here and I've got two here, so these are separate. Um, so therefore I'm gonna try and combine things together. I'm gonna to combine things that I know need to be combined in the final result, like say that R squared and that EI to the two theta. The R squared E to the I two theta is in fact, if you have a look at this entire first term here, and then in this second term, just have a look at the first part of it, it is in fact a common factor between these, uh, these two terms that I got from the u squared and the v squared. So I'm gonna pull that factor out. That gives me an r squared e to the i two theta. And then what do I get left with inside the brackets, right? You've got, uh, let's write it like this. There's just a one when you factorize it out there. And then you've got an e to the i two pi on three left behind. Okay, so at this point here, I've, I've happily used um, complex, or sorry, exponential form, the exponential form of a complex number to do all my manipulations so far. But at this moment, I'm, I'm actually kind of stuck because I have this addition that I need to do here and it's just not set up. Exponential form is not set up to make addition easy, right? Um, all that stuff is tucked away up in the exponents. So if you've got, you know, um, a common base, you're good to go, but, but here I don't, right? I mean, if you're multiplying, not adding. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna transition out into a different form of a complex number. And that's part of what I like about this particular question. It actually forces us into cleverly using, for particular reasons, different forms, okay? So I'll write this, uh, oopsie daisy, I'll write this r squared e to the i two theta out the front. I think it's fine to stay put because remember, that's actually my destination, essentially. So it kind of looks good. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna notice that inside here, I can use, uh, if I think about just this term here, I can use mod arg form, trigonometric form, to help me evaluate this thing, right? Because by definition, or using uh, Euler's formula, um, e to the i theta equals, like what is it, how do we define it? It's actually uh, cos of two pi on three plus i sine of two pi on three. So I can go ahead and I can evaluate each of those things. So I get the one out the front, and then what am I adding? What is this going to be equal to? Cos two pi on three, cos starts up here and then it goes down at pi on two, it passes through the x axis. So this is gonna be negative now um, and hopefully you're, you're thinking about your exact values and you recognize that that's gonna be negative a half uh, and then plus uh, root three on two i because that's, you're getting that root three, um, that one, two root three triangle, okay? Now in this form, um, we've kind of used, uh, as it were, we've kind of used this trigonometric, this mod, mod arg form to get it into now rectangular form. And I noticed people saying rectangular um, in, the, you know, in the chat earlier, and you're like, oh, this is great. I can finally use this now to add these things together. So I've got some fractions. I'll give myself a bit of space down here. I've got um, r squared e to the i two theta hanging out the front. And then here, that one plus negative a half is just gonna be positive a half plus root three on two i. All right, now at this point, I've used rectangular form to uh, accomplish the addition, um, but I, I kind of want to get back to exponential form so that I can get these two complex numbers in here to play with each other. And we have this great advantage of having done the right-hand side and knowing where I'm headed, right? Do you recognize what this complex number is? Um, it's the, uh, it's not the conjugate because that goes vertically, but it's kind of like a, a horizontal, not kind of like, it is the horizontal reflection of this complex number that we had up here, right? So if this is cause of two pi on three, if you reflect back across the imaginary axis, hopefully you recognize that this is going to be not e to the i two pi on three, but e to the i one pi on three. I should put that in brackets as well, which is what we anticipated up here. So at this point, I'm pretty much finished, aren't I? Because I can use my index laws to put these together. I get the two theta, I get the pi on three that I wanted, and that's it. That is me getting to the right-hand side, okay?